All right. As you said, we will today spend 15 minutes to uh, talk about exciting co-pilots for Microsoft 365 with Microsoft Graph Connectors, right? So oh, you might have already heard, right, that there are, like, when you think about where the data is stored, there are two main ways in which you can extend co-pilots for Microsoft 365. You can either use a connector, which means that you are importing the data from your external apps into to, to, um, to Microsoft 365, right? And then another one is is to build a plugin, which means that uh, it will retrieve the data on the fly based on your prompt, right? So when 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 you send a prompt, it will match the uh, tools that it has available, and then it will find one that matches your prompt. And based on that, it will reach out to it on the fly. So keep that in mind when you think about different ways in which you can bring uh, additional info info that isn't a part of my uh, that, that 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 isn't a part of um, a Microsoft 365 to uh, cope. Um, 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 right. Now, when you think about a connector, right, like it has it, it's it's built based on three uh, pillars, right? So first one, it requires a connection. A connection is kind of think about it as a contract or a place into which you ingest the content from your external source, right? So first, you always need a, a connection. You create it on your um, um, a tenant Two, a um, a connector creates a schema. Schema de defines the shape of uh, the data that you want to import, right? And when you look at that, uh, you will find that it will have uh, pro 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 properties, uh, different types. So we will uh, go more into depth about that. And then the final part in there is that it ingests the uh, 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 content, right? So you've got three elements. Again, you have the connection which is the place into which you ingest the content. Then you have schema, which is the shape of the content you ingest. And then the third part is actually ingesting the content from your external source to Microsoft 365. I guess so far so good, right? When you think a connector, it can be really simple. Like in its easiest, simplest shape, it could be a PowerShell script. All you need is an entra approach Right, so basically the contract you establish between your app and Microsoft Cloud, saying what your app is, the way it can authenticate, and permissions that it needs on Microsoft 365. Right, so that is the one element you get. Then the next part is you need three calls to Microsoft Graph APIs. Again, a call to create a connection, to create schema, and finally import the items from your external system to Microsoft 365. Right, so it's something like if you have a data store, maybe it's FAQ, maybe it's document, maybe um, some some other things that 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 you want to import, right? And you you only want to do it once. You could, in theory, write a PowerShell script and just do it one off, and that would be your connector. There will be a fully fledged fledged connector that you run only once. If you have a data store that let's say lives and the files that are there are being kept up to date and there and it's more elaborate you can make it as elaborate as a fully fledged cl cloud app with incremental crawls managing calls uh whatever you want right so you can scale it out from a single powershell script that it could be to a fully fledged cl cloud app that works with queues that handles uh incremental crawls that manages access that even has maybe its own admin interface so so that that, that admin have more control about the data you ingest right so it all depends like you have all ability you can you you can basically use the power of the cloud in any way you want all depends on your needs right so a connector can be as small and as big as you need basically imagine those needs that you have for your case right with that the basics in place final, final check is that clear do do you understand what a connector is the way it works right roughly I don't see any nods, so give me some thumbs ups. I get a thumbs up, I get, get an applause. All right, let's see if it will 
clearer if we show it in action. So I've got here a connector that I've built in C sharp. I hope that is fine with you. If not, uh, we have also other examples that you can check afterwards. But basically, you know, the, the way it works is exactly the same, right? Again, we start with a connection. So in connection, what do we need to say? We need to give it an ID. We need to give it a name, the name that we will see, and we need to give it a description, right? So, so, so that afterwards we know what this connection and connector is about, right? So these are three basic th th things that we need to include at minimum. There are some other things that we can add there as well, but for, for, for now, let's just st stick with the ID, description, and a name. Then second element is schema, right? Which again, defines the shape of the data that we are importing. The connector that you're seeing here now is a connector that imports some of the Microsoft Graph docs that we have on Microsoft Learn, right? So we use that. So for every article that we pull in from Microsoft Learn, we will define a title, which is a string. Uh, we will be able to uh, query on it, search on it. And there's, there's also this important part, a label, right? When you want to use Microsoft Graph, graph um, Connector with Cope uh, Microsoft in three, 365, there are three labels you have to include or the content will not show, show, show up. You need to have a title, you need to have a URL and you have to have icon, which I don't have here, but I'm going to uh, cheat around that, right? So these are basically the three things you need to have in here, right? For 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 the content, uh, content to, to work. And in this case, we're also including description and a URL, because again, when you get a reference, you want to point to the original item that lives at a URL, right? So, so that as a user who gets the answer, you're able to navigate to that original source where the item is stored, right? So, so far, the shape of the connection and schema that we've got. Now, when it comes to actually creating all of that, right? Again, it's three Microsoft Graph calls. First one is to create a connection. And for that, like in this case, we use the C Sharp SDK for, uh, for Microsoft Graph. And it's just single call, client external connections post async. So with that, we use the info that we've got in here, the connection part, and we send it to Microsoft Graph. With that, we create a connection that we can now use. The next step is to create sch schema, right? So again, um, another call that we've got, client external, we use the connection that we, we created and on it, we, we create schema. And this op operation takes anywhere between three minutes and a few more do, depending on time of day you use it, right? So uh, I will not run this code now, but know that when you do that, uh, you might need to wait a minute or two basically to see all of that being done in place, right? So with that, you have everything you need to start ingesting the content that you want to import to Microsoft 365 and then eventually make available for Copilot, right? So, so that covers the part where we create the connection and create schema. Then the final part is ingesting the content. Again, in this case, the connector that, that you see now, um, import some of the articles that we have on Microsoft Learn about Microsoft Graph. No matter your source, you can think about it as a connector uh, works basically uh, the way it imports the content uh, consists basically of three steps. There is always extraction. You are always extracting the data from a source. You will transform the data after you extracted it to match the shape that it needs to have in Microsoft Graph. And then finally, the step is to upload actually the content to Microsoft Graph. So it's ETL. If you work with, with the data in the past, you might have known that ETL is kind of the same process where you connect to um, a data store, extract the data to it, uh, from it, change its shape, and then, and then lo lo load it into another store. A connector is exactly that. It's doing exactly the same. Right, so in this case, if you look like at extraction, what does that do? Well, it reads the files, the markdown files that I've got from disk. That is it. 
right? And here I do some additional work where I change the Markdown to HTML because Graph Connector doesn't know anything about, about um, Markdown, but it can deal with a HTML, basically to have that richer um, um, output, right? So that's the first part. When we, when we extract the content, in this case, all I need to do is to read the files from, from, from disk. Then the next part is I need to change the files that I've got on disk to match to become the external items, which you see here, that I will upload to Microsoft Graph, right? So in here, basically what I do is that for every file that I got from disk, I'm going to get an ID. I'm going to uh, fill in the data that I've got, which is the title, description, URL, and the content, which is the actual blob, the body of a doc, right? So that's what we are indexing. And that is what LLM will use basically to get the, the rich answer to users, right? And here we say HTML. And the final part is when you ingest the data from an external source to a, with a connector, you set on it ACLs. You're telling basically who has access to this item. It can be everybody in the org. It can be everybody external. Um, everybody except external users, or it can be a intra group or an external group or a user, right? So it's up to you, but keep in mind that you have at all times the ability to keep track and to set who's got the access to it so that you are not exposing the data from your external store to a broader group than intended, right? Keep this in mind. This is a really fundamental part, right? And that kind of wraps up the part where we change the shape of the data from that we extract to match the data that we want to import to Microsoft Graph. The final part is actually the Im Im importing the data itself. And again, this is just a single API call that we do. For every item that we want to import, what we do is we get the reference to connection and then get items and we upload the item and that is basically it. And we repeat that for every single item that we want to uh, have available in Microsoft 365 and then also make, make available for LLMs. I guess so far so good. Any questions? Check, check, double check. A lot of random discussion um, on a chat, but I, I don't think we have a time to. Excellent. Come. All right. Cool. Yeah. Right. So the most so there are two benefits when you that you get when you import a content from an external source with a connector. First, it appears in search. So what you're seeing here is I am now in the Microsoft 365 app. I searched for something from my external so source. Again, in this case, we are importing the data of or the articles from Microsoft Graph Docs that we have on Microsoft Learn, right? And here you're seeing basically the results in my search, in my tenant search, but if you look at the reference, they point to the original article that, I, that we have in Microsoft Learn. So that is a really great way for folks to be able to find relevant things, no matter where they are, but be able to find them from a, a single place, right? So that that is really cool. One, the content you import is going to appear in search, but what we are really after here is to be able to get the answers when we talk to uh, Copilot from ISO 365, right? So that's exactly what you're seeing here on a screen. Here was my original prompt, how to create a Microsoft Graph uh, client. And I'm getting here, you know, all of the answer with uh, different steps and so forth and so on. But the key part here is the reference here. This is what you see here. This info is coming. This is basically the proof the evidence that, that this info is coming from the external source that we have in, um, uh, ingested, right? So it, it shows internal, and here's the link ba basically to that external article that we brought into Microsoft 365. And again, in this case, it's just the Microsoft Graph Docs, but it can be really anything, any data type, anything that, that you want to bring uh, that, that is external to Microsoft 365, right? So this is a really great way if you have unstructured data uh, that you want people to be able to search through really easily without having to, you know, go to and, and other apps. So with that, I hope that you got uh, in a nutshell an idea about how it all, all, 
hours. I would encourage you to give it a try if you want to learn more about this, this ability. Just the other day, we published a, a new module on Microsoft Learn that takes you step by step, explains you all theory about how it all works. And the um, cool, cool thing is, is that you will be able to do it at your own pace. Right, so you you will go through about all theory about the connectors, how how they all work, different elements that you've got. Again, add calls, permissions, and then also there are hands-on parts in there too. So you'll be be able to actually learn it and experience that too. Right, so uh, if you have a minute or two, go through it. You'll really uh, appreciate it, and it's really an invaluable thing to know. So one, right, go to learn, uh, check the module, and then the next part is. Check out the sa samples that, uh, 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 that we've got, because again, that will help you understand what are different things that you can do, what connectors can, can you build. And we've got examples in .NET, JavaScript, TypeScript, PowerShell, Python, Java, right? So no matter which language you want to use, we have an example for, 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 for that, and they are a really great way to learn. Finally, if you want to know more, do, do let us know, we're here to help. Thank you.